So we'll start with this first case now. So this is a case of a 23 year old male who has shoulder pain and uh, when we start looking at this case we first start looking at the coronal in fat suppressed images um, where we can look for bone edema and for um, fluid and what we see is there's no fluid that's really looking out of proportion to what we would expect. If we look carefully for bone marrow edema as we go from posterior to anterior one can get a sense that there is some subtle anterior superior humeral head bone marrow edema which is really at this time something that we can't quite work out so let's just sort of keep it at that in the back of our heads. Looking on let's go to assessing the rotator cuff. So looking at the rotator cuff the supraspinatus is the first tendon we'd look at. It's the cigar shaped muscle which inserts into the greater tuberosity and if we look at the tendon itself you can see that it has some heterogeneous architecture within it. Um, it is not dark in signal but if we see that the signal intensity seems to be exaggerated on the non-fat suppressed images as opposed to the fat suppressed images and so if at all there is some mild supraspinatus tendinosis. Moving on to the infraspinatus, while it is interesting to look at the infraspinatus on the coronal images I personally find the sagittal images can be quite satisfying so as you can watch the tendon and the muscle come across to their humeral attachments and we can see here that there is supraspinatus tendinosis these are the fibers of the infraspinatus posteriorly we can see the posterior fibers inserting nicely and the anterior fibers coming and showing a little bit of tendinosis so primarily we have some increased signal in the supraspinatus as well as the anterior infraspinatus the posterior infraspinatus tendon looks good as does the teres minor. This is also by the way a great place to look at the subscapularis. When we look at the subscapularis on the sagittal images it's easy for us to mistake this as being tendinosis when actually it is the muscle tendon junction that's confusing us. So I like looking at the sagittal images to get a good sense of the subscapularis as you see it coming across to its humeral attachment and looking quite good. If at all, there may be a little bit of thickening of the superior most fiber of the subscapularis, but otherwise the subscapularis looks quite good. Um, after we've assessed the tendons, we go back and look at the muscle mass and you can see the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor and the subscapularis all have good muscle mass. There's no real streaks of fat within this that suggest fatty infiltration and this is a fairly normal appearance of these muscles. From there we move on to the biceps. The long head of the biceps lands in the, uh, in the bicepital groove. We can follow it up in its vertical portion and then it swings across to its horizontal portion in an area called the pulley where sometimes it's a little hard to see and then it goes into its horizontal or intra-articular portion and in this case we can see that the intra-articular portion looks pretty good here but as we get closer towards the anchor attachment which is sort of at the superior labral attachment or the sublime tucker one can sort of see that there is a split within the biceps and obviously there's a little bit of scarring and edema which can be seen here on this coronal image in that area of the rotator interval and here is very nicely demonstrated the bicepital split so that's your biceps tendon showing a little bit of tendinosis as it comes across as we look at this area of the biceps we go back and think a little bit of that bone marrow edema that we saw earlier and you can see that here and what we see that this bone marrow edema actually corresponds a bit to the area where the biceps traverses across the anterior aspect of the humeral head and if we look at this area over here again what you'll see on the axial images as you get towards the top is you can see that there is a little bit of remodeling of the um, anterior aspect of the humeral head in this region so let's keep that also in mind for a second. Um, Moving on from the biceps to the labrum, we look at the labrum on um, proton density images that are slightly more T1 weighted images. Um, here you can see this is the regular proton density with a little bit of motion and here is the, is the more T1 weighted proton density image. We can see here the anterior labrum looks quite good. This dark structure here anteriorly is the middle glenohumeral ligament. As we come down we can see the anterior labrum looks quite good. When we want to assess the superior labrum or the immediate superior labrum, the coronal images are good. And here we can see that there is no major signal abnormality within the superior labrum. And we can see there's no major abnormality within the superior labrum itself. It's that biceps labral junction split that we saw. Um, as we move on to looking a little bit at the posterior labrum and you come towards the top, you can see that there's a discrete split in that posterior superior labrum. And as we come a little bit lower down, 
there is attenuation and fraying it doesn't look quite as dark as it does here whereas here more inferiorly once we hit the level of the equator you can see the labrum more discreetly and distinctly so the posterior superior quadrant of the labrum in this case is considerably frayed and probably has a an element of a tear within it so that takes care of our labrum once we finish looking at the labrum one looks at the inferior capsule you can see here the inferior capsule looks moderately thickened notice how on the non fat suppressed image there is good trough there is good um, separation between the underlying fat and the capsule so you can see it really well as opposed to here sometimes on the fat suppressed image where that differentiation may be a little bit harder there's not a lot of pericapsular edema and so we just have capsular thickening the next thing we'd look at is the articular cartilage and you can see that nicely on the coronal images this gray area over here this is the articular cartilage you can see it over the humeral head as well as over the glenoid and then if we look at our uh, axial images there's another place that we can see the articular cartilage really nicely so that gives you a sense that the articular cartilage is intact we look at our acromioclavicular joint it looks quite good we look at the subacromial space for the fluid there's not really a lot of subacromial fluid if at all there is trace fluid along the biceps tendon sheath which is pretty close to what we would expect within physiologic limits and there is a little bit of intraarticular fluid as well so essentially what are we dealing with at this case um we've gone through this case and what we really see is um that there is let's see this we have findings of mild supra and infraspinatus high signal which would be in keeping with tendinosis we have a bicep split at the anchor we have anterior humeral remodeling and edema as the biceps traverses it the rotator interval shows some scarring and mild edema there is posterior superior quadrant labral tear and there is inferior capsular thickening so given all of this and the clinical history we were provided which was essentially a 23 year old person with shoulder pain what can we infer this is probably a physically active individual because we saw there was very little subcutaneous fat there was excellent muscle mass and the person was only 23 years years old there was inferior capsular thickening um and basically this inferior capsular thickening would limit inferior humeral head translation during activity so the biceps acts to keep the humeral head in place anteriorly therefore there's posterior superior migration of the humeral head which in turn impinges on the posterior superior labrum leading to a labral tear and this in turn impinges on the supra and infraspinatus leading to tendinosis usually involving the posterior supra and anterior infraspinatus so when we conclude on this case we say findings suggest a posterior internal instability with inferior capsular thickening supra comma infraspinatus tendinosis posterior superior labral tear and insertional biceps tendinosis with mild secondary remodeling of the anterior humeral head thank you